Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway. We are here for your weekly K-State football recruiting update, and this is the start of a really busy stretch, and I'm sure we're going to have plenty of excitement in these over the next month and a half, really, uh, because official visits are starting up in a big way this weekend, and then moving forward, the, the amount of guys that are going to be on campus is just going to continue to grow, and in addition to that, we've already talked about it this week, but Drew was in Salina on Tuesday, so saw some of the local guys at the Sharp Performance stuff. And then yesterday, K-State kicked off their camp season, and we saw a lot of activity out of that camp. If you were on social media or on the boards last night, you noticed that, oh, this guy got an offer. This guy got an offer. And that kind of coincides with everything that Drew was telling us going into it was, hey, th this is going to be one of the most loaded like camp sessions that they've ever had. And sure enough, because it feels like everybody that stepped foot in inside of Manhattan yesterday got an offer to play football there. So we'll talk about that in a second. But let's let's start by looking over uh, the the official visitors this weekend, because these are the guys in the class of 2025 that, you know, once once June ends or you get to late June, um, there's always a chance that they could pop at any point in time. And all three of these guys that are known to be visiting this weekend are significant in one way or the other. So I'll throw them up on the screen and Drew can kind of give a little insight on each guy and and where K-State might sit because you see Jalen Cooper. He's probably the one that people are most excited about, a wide receiver from Texas, four-star status. Uh, our Steve Wiltfong at on three has SMU logged as the prediction there. So what is the realistic chances that K-State can jump into the Cooper sweepstakes and then you can go on Abram and Hammerbeck after that? I mean, I, th I think that there's a chance that K-State can kind of swoop in for Jalen Cooper. This will be his first time in Manhattan. I know that I think that some of uh, Steve Wiltfong's prediction for SMU had to do with when he took his official visit to SMU, it seemed like they were kind of on a run of getting a bunch of prospects committed during that time. So I, I think that if there's some of that in the further that the visit gets away from SMU, I think that the better off it probably is for like K-State, Houston and other schools that are really trying to get involved. So uh, anything can happen with official visits. And I think that we've kind of seen that the longer that we've been in this, where you can feel like a team is really trailing and then they end up catching and eventually taking over and landing somebody that you kind of didn't think about. So it's, it's definitely possible. I would say that of the three uh, official visits this weekend that we know about, I probably feel the worst about Jalen Cooper just because it, it's just his first time in Manhattan and he's kind of a newer target. So you kind of don't know where he stands with everybody else. And you don't really know a timeline because it's just like, kind of like with SMU, like it just seems like the further that a target like that gets away from the school that they were just at, that it's probably not as good for that school. Tristan Abram is a fun fun watch on tape and I really like him and where he would slot in at K-State on um, in their defense uh, with how defensive line recruitment is kind of trending and where they want the position to go and, and K-State's probably the team on the rise I'm not sure if I would go as far as to say that they'll land Tristan Abram at this current moment but I think that that's something to really kind of keep in mind that he hasn't had his offer for very long K-State immediately got an official visit immediately made his top eight after after his offer so i think that that's something to kind of keep in mind is okay they're probably the team that's on the rise so if they can really kind of close in and close fast that there could really be some fireworks there indiana memphis definitely two teams to worry about and, and it's all about kind of getting everybody on board because remember k State has been recruiting abram for a, a while despite not having his offer for too long that he's been recruited for over a year so now it's okay. Now we can really sell them or sell him and his family on K State and kind of like the why on why they ended up waiting. Sean Hammerbeck is an interesting one because I, I don't think that anybody really truly knows what Hammerbeck is thinking. And I know that it says offensive tackle for him, but K State actually likes him as a defensive end. And he would be like one of the big defensive ends because he is a big kid he's like 6'7 250 260 and can really do a lot of things on the 335 
And it's what really makes his recruitment interesting too. Not only is that nobody really kind of feels good about where they stand, depending on who you talk to, different schools want him at different positions. Like Texas Tech wants him at offensive tackle. K-State wants him at defensive end. And Minnesota and Nebraska are just kind of recruiting him as a jumbo athlete where he could play on either side of the ball. So even like with his future position, it's really up in the air. So I'm really excited to see where his recruitment goes and to kind of hear about how his official visit goes because he's somebody that we don't really know a whole lot about. Well, and if you if the people notice, he's the number one ranked player in the state of South Dakota. And as we've seen really since Chris Kleiman got here, and it makes a lot of sense, but K-State has had a lot of success. Really, anywhere Kansas and North, Chris Kleiman and his staff, I think, have had really good success. But specifically in the Dakotas, they've been able to find guys, get them to come to K-State. So that seems like out of out of all of those, I think each of them, there's a reason to kind of be interested in what comes out of it. But like you're saying, that's probably the most intriguing just to see where it goes. And like a lot of this probably ends up coming down to Hammerbeck's preference on what position do I want to play in college? And I, I don't know about you, but to me, having the opportunity to be an edge guy seems a lot more exciting than being an offensive lineman. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And especially with the body type that K-State wants at defensive end, like he is the ideal defensive end at six, seven. Like uh, the other crazy thing to me is that you, you know, last cycle we kind of talked about Grant Bricks living kind of in the middle of nowhere. Sean Hammerbeck is from like, uh, I believe it's Wimmer or Winter, <laughs> South Dakota. Like the population there is like 2000 like it so that he's somebody that kind of lives in the middle of nowhere. And it's fun to see guys like that really load up on offers because it feels like now we're in a day and age where it doesn't matter where you're from. People will find you. Yeah. And K-State's been really good at that. All right. uh, Let's let's shift our focus then and talk about the camps that have started for K-State. You were there last night. And it was a busy, busy time. It felt like probably every three minutes uh, you were sending a message to T.Y. and I and said, hey, this guy looks good. And then a couple minutes later it was, all right, they're talking to this guy. He's getting an offer right now. Let me find his name. Then we had the name. And then we got the string of tweets from everybody that was there. So uh, however you want to do this, you can go over some of the, the various guys that got offers yesterday. But before we go into guys that were actually at camp, Let's start with a guy that wasn't at camp yesterday, but you think will be there this weekend, a guy that is local, class of 26. You saw him at Sharp on Tuesday and brought him up then. Uh, Tell us a little bit more about a a very intriguing Manhattan High prospect. Yeah, I really like J.J. Dunnigan from uh, Manhattan High. His dad played at K-State, and he's super, super long, can play safety, can play corner. I, I think that I like him as more of like a free safety type because he's super long and rangy and having that corner skill already in college or in high school, I think can really translate to free safety in college. And we've seen K-State kind of take advantage of that with Callum Barta playing corner in college and or playing corner in high school and then moving to safety in college. And we've even seen like Josh Hayes and Marquis Siegel be corners that flip to free safety. So I think that he's somebody that kind of fits that mold. And K-State really made it a priority to be the first power four offer. And I think that it makes a lot of sense because he's from Manhattan high. He's a legacy. He, he literally is just in their backyard. So you want to be the first one to kind of, kind of pull the trigger and offer him because he's somebody that has grown up going to K state stuff. So I think that K state's in a really, really good spot, even though it's super early as a 2026 prospect. But he's somebody to definitely keep in mind going forward because the 2026 class in Kansas looks to be just as good as the 2025 class. Yeah, that's uh, Cade Snyder, uh, uh, an offensive lineman from Salina that uh, you actually just have a story up today on KSO about talking to and kind of getting an idea of where things sit for him. He's already got four-star status. Uh, and and we've seen, I mean, the really this stretch, the class of 23 to the class of 26, that might be the best four-year period that Kansas has ever seen in terms of high school recruiting with the – it's not, you know, the top – there have been some better top guys in the past, but as we talked about with, like, Lincoln Cure, there's only, like, a couple of other years where, you know, the the Babola and, and Cure situation would not be at the top. But in terms of depth of these, of these classes, they just seem to keep getting better. Uh, you talk about a 2026 guy, though – 
the first offer of a guy that was at camp yesterday is a 2027 guy that I think we should talk about because this is just going to be one of those that's fascinating to follow along with. If you're a 2027 guy getting offered in May of 2024, you probably have a lot of talent and you're probably going to have a a busy next couple of years because a lot of people are going to be interested. Yeah, Riley Drew is an interesting guy from Georgia, 2027 prospect. Uh, Like It was wild to see him uh play yesterday because i thought that he was actually older than he was which made it even funnier because he just looks and plays at a different speed and a different level than everybody else from grace in high school which is a really good high school in georgia for football and, and i think that this is another thing where you see k-state offer a 2027 guy and you're like what what's going on there and then you realize that k-state's actually his first offer which I think is something that kind of is something that they wanted to do and make like make some way and make some hay there because we saw probably the youngest kid that I've seen get offered at a K-State camp was Brandon Jacobs, son who just finished his eighth grade season like a few years ago. And now he's in, now he's in the 2025 class. Uh, but now to see them kind of offer the younger kids, it's really fun because K-State is pretty particular about who they offer, especially at these camps. So you really know that Riley Drew blew them away last night as a 2027 guy kid. Yeah. That was one of those that you just, okay. You know that the potential's there and uh, one that will be fascinating to follow over the next couple of years, because um, I know it's on three profile already lists some, some Penn state interest. And like you figure if you're getting an offer from K state as a 2027 guy in 2024, uh, you're probably going to over the next year accrue some really big time offers. So that'll be one to kind of keep an eye on. Now, in terms of guys that are a little bit closer, uh, there were, were quite a few 2025 and 2026 offers that were handed out yesterday. Some local, uh, a lot of guys inside the state of Kansas and Missouri, they got their offers. So this is where I'll let you branch out and you can take it wherever you want. Uh, some guys, you can group them. However, obviously there's one really specific connection where a, a duo of Kirksville, Missouri teammates were offered. So uh, however you want to go with some of the other guys that people should be aware of that got offered yesterday. Uh, the first one that I think that everybody should know about uh, because of his last name is Ashton Moore, the brother of Austin Moore got offered last night. He was really impressive at linebacker. will probably play the same will position that Austin played. And, and I think that this is just how fast our recruiting goes where one day you can kind of think, oh, this guy's probably going to be the next commit, but then somebody else gets offered and you think maybe it's him. And, and I would think that with the family ties, the family connection, and K-State being his first power four offer, that Ashton Moore would probably be in the driver's seat. By the way, I don't know if anybody has seen a picture of Ashton and Austin, but holy smokes, you could those two, if you couldn't tell who was who, like they could be twins, even though Ashton is so much younger than Austin, they look identical. And especially when they are on the playing field, like they play the same. So that's one to really kind of keep in mind. Uh, Dominic Mitchell from Phoenix is a safety that got offered yesterday. He's somebody that you probably need to know about because his recruitment kind of seems like it's going to be a sprint where he's getting a lot of interest in offers from power four schools. And he seems kind of willing to commit by the end of June, maybe July. So he's somebody to really kind of keep in mind because I know that he's working on scheduling an official visit to Casey already after getting the offer. So he's somebody to keep in mind. Uh, There's two offensive linemen in the 2025 class to really hone in on. Uh, Nelson McGuire, who is enormous and a huge human being. At 6'5", he has a 7-foot wingspan, would kind of be the ideal tackle. Uh, and since going to K-State and uh, getting off her there, he's went to uh, TCU right after being in Manhattan uh, for the mega camp at TCU, and has already gotten offers from UNLV in Minnesota. So he's somebody that his recruitment is starting to take off. And then uh, there's also Andrew Williams, who you kind of hit on, another massive human being at 6'8" another big time tackle. And and it's just fun to see these guys kind of like take off because I think that he is another one where once he goes to mega camps, he's somebody that will probably cure a lot more interest. 
And then another few local guys that I'll mention in the 2025 class are Martel Jackson and Brandon Wilson. Brandon Wilson, probably going to be a safety at the next level. Uh, Casey was the first school to even ever reach out to Brandon Wilson. So for Casey to offer and kind of be the first one kind of puts them in the driver's seat, I would imagine. And he's going to be going to a few more camps, but he's somebody that I would keep in mind because he will probably end up taking an official visit during June. And that's one where if he schedules an official visit, I would really be kind of keep my ears open and eyes open to a potential commitment. And then Martel Jackson from Derby. I know that everybody kind of hesitates when they see Derby High School now. No, um, I think which, I think Dylan Edwards has broken the Derby curse. It you know just in a roundabout way, but I think it's broken now. But he's somebody to really keep in mind because K State probably needs a no another corner, uh, along with JoJo Scott, who's taking an official visit. And Martel Jackson really blew up over uh, state track and ran a ten six one hundred, and has a four three eight forty, and is really long. And it kind of fits the mold that K-State wants at corner. So to see him get offered kind of makes me think that K-State's going to try and make his recruitment a sprint as well. A lot of, a lot of guys tossed in there that uh, K-State, uh, I think it's, you know, we, we saw a good handful of 2026 guys end up with offers yesterday. But this is the, the time of year where like the 2025 stuff starts to really get refined. And, you know, we, we're, we've been talking a lot in basketball about like, oh, trying to figure out what names are going to pop up. This is where we start to get those names that I'm, they're not like back end in terms of uh, like priority, but they're filling out the rest of the expectations and the way that the, that the recruiting class might come about. And as you've talked about with some of these guys, they may have some of the later offers, but they might be some of the, the earlier ones to pop with a commitment. Yeah. And just because these guys don't have a ranking yet, because I know a lot of them don't, and the 25, 25 class that got offered doesn't mean that they won't be highly ranked eventually because there will be guys that get discovered at these mega camps and at individual camps that ended up being in the four star and then on 300 as well. So I, I think that just because somebody doesn't have like the, the sexy offer sheet or a big time rating right now doesn't mean that they won't because I, I mean, we, we've seen it and we saw it with Gus Hawkins last year where case eight was his only offer and then Ole Miss came around and off, well, his only offer that he put out there and then Ole Miss uh, got put out there and then we saw how far along his ranking came and he went from being like an 88 uh, at the at the beginning to jumping up to being the number 52 player in the country in the, in the last on three ranking so just because of where rankings are right now doesn't mean that they won't change yeah the uh, the the Gus Hawkins recruitment last year like very ideal for how you would want things to play out if you're a K State fan. And uh, he, he obviously helped kind of shut things down early. And so you saw, I mean, it's not just the the commitment, hey, I'm going to come play for you, but that's like a true K State commitment he had. And based on some of these guys you've talked about here, K State's kind of laying the foundation for to get some of those guys. And then that can set up the, you know, join forces with, we've, we've talked about Dylan Duff at various times over the last couple of months about, kind of being the key like player recruiters because these guys talk. They want their team to be as good as possible. You're kind of setting the foundation for that if you're K-State right now. Yeah, and it, it's fun to see these camp offers too because I think that there's probably no other school besides maybe Clemson because I know that Clemson is super particular about how they offer kids and usually it's comes out of camp. There's not a lot of schools on the Power Four that really kind of make camps a big deal so if you want like a the testimony of k of a camp being a big deal at k-state just look at last night i think there was 14 offers and a couple power preferred walk-on offers just from last night and they anticipate sunday being a very good group as well yeah we'll see uh where it goes and uh look forward to what comes out of sunday any other names that we haven't mentioned yet that you want to toss out there or uh you know, you can save them because we'll have uh, plenty of time next week too to to dive into it. And I'm sure, honestly, we'll probably do a little bit of recruiting multiple times next week since we'll want to recap how Sunday goes because we'll kind of be in the same position. But uh, anybody else that, that people should know or be aware of last night? 
Uh, Tyron Parker is somebody to, to know about. He goes to uh, Shawnee Heights High School in Topeka. So shout out to Topeka. Oh, okay. I can't believe Drew wanted to make sure we talked about the Topeka kid. Topeka area. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to offend the the great people of Shawnee Heights. <laughs> so he is somebody to know about, and could I know that there's been some rankings out there already, but he could be in that contention for top two, top three in the state for 2026. Uh, K State was his second offer behind Iowa State, and he's somebody that uh, he came into the camp a little banged up, so he didn't really participate, but got the offer because K-State knows how good he can be and will be. Uh, Ronell Johnson is another one from Blue Springs, a 2026 defensive lineman that got offered. And he was super, super impressive. I, Since we don't get a roster at these camps, and I think that that's going to change going forward, that we're end up you know, going to end up getting rosters. Uh, Ronell Johnson was a guy that I thought was a 2025 guy. So I really liked him. And then when I found out that he was a 2026 guy, I... I liked him even more because he has great size at 6'4", 245 and moved really well. And as the camp kind of went along, he was somebody that really started to find his own and kind of came into his own as, as the camp went on and started to really win the one-on-ones and make some good moves and learned kind of where to put his hands during the one-on-ones. So he was somebody that was really impressive as well. All good stuff from Drew there, and he'll have more on Sunday. So if you want to make sure that you uh, get the up-to-the-minute type stuff, be sure to get to K-State Online. Uh, Drew will have a thread going on there where it's just his updates from camp. Then also, obviously, social media will play a big part of it too because you'll see guys putting out offers and everything else. So we'll have you covered at KSO as K-State continues to accumulate some of this stuff. And then also – uh probably see if there will be any reaction to official visits that start today. And then uh, once they get going today, it'll be the next couple of weekends. K-State will be really busy. It'll be a big sprint. And uh, obviously things will cap off with that June 21st weekend where uh, the big name in town will be Lincoln Cure, but plenty of other big big name and really important targets for K-State going to be coming to Manhattan over the next uh, four weeks. So, that's where it stands right now. We'll uh, get more from Drew next week, and uh, we'll, we'll, we won't pester him for a Sunday show uh, on Sunday since he'll be busy with some other stuff uh, at camp again. So that'll do it for us. For Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Go check out kstateonline.com to get up to the minute news on the Wildcats, both basketball and football, and uh, then stay locked in right here because if there's ever breaking news on K-State, we'll have it for you here and also uh, be ready to go with something for you each and every day of the week. So. I'm Mason Both. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching Case It Online.